In this lesson we're going to look at some woodwork joints. We're going to consider two types of construction, flat frame construction and carcass construction. Both of these you have dabbled in already and you've made uh, a handful of woodwork joints but we need to widen our knowledge now and we need to learn about far more woodwork joints and the and the reasons why you would choose which one for whatever job you are working on. So let's start off with flat frame construction. Now flat frames are found in all sorts of wooden things, okay, picture frames, chairs, bed frames, windows, some old doors involve uh, frames as well and they require woodwork joints at the corners, T-joints and crossovers. So in this drawing here we've got joints at the corner, we've got joints where pieces of wood cross over and we've got T-joints here as well. It's also worth noticing that these uh, parts of a frame have got different names as well so the parts going across the way in my presentation here, the dark brown ones are called rails and the pale ones, the parts of wood that are going up and down the way are called styles. You'd expect it to be able to recognise name and choose the best woodwork joint for the job. So let's look at the basics for flat frames then. The butt joint, by any measurement a rubbish weak joint but it's very easy to make. It's simply pieces of wood cut at 90 degrees so that their ends are square and glued together. Very very weak joint but like I said easy to make. A slight improvement on that is the mitre joint. Now the mitre joint is cut at 45 degrees for two reasons. One, it's a prettier joint, it's more beautiful to look at and also it slightly increases the gluing area. The size of that rectangle in there is slightly larger than the size of that rectangle in there. So more glue equals a slightly stronger joint. The dowel joint which if you've ever put together any piece of IKEA furniture or anything like that is used quite a lot in flat frame constructions. It's quite easy to make, you only really need a drill, you need to be accurate when you're marking it out mind you, but there are jigs and tools to help you do it. But so, long as you, so long as you are accurate with the dowel joint, all you really need is a drill to do it and once with a bit of glue this is an incredibly strong and easy to make joint. So. Let's look at some halving joints and you'll find halving joints at the corners and at the crossover parts and indeed at the T-junctions as well in a flip frame construction. They're called halving joints because if you look you're removing half of the material from each part, half from the bottom part, half from the top part. We've got the corner halving joint which you'll find in the corners of things, the cross halving joint, the T halving joint and the dovetail halving joint as well. The dovetail having joint has an extra little consideration because depending on what type of wood you're using would depend on the angle that you choose here. We've got a slope here, we've got a steep slope and we've got a shallow slope right here. Soft woods require a slope of around 1 in 6, that means for every um, centimetre you go down you go 6 centimetres out. Hardwoods can cope with a shallower cut in there, 1 in 8. These joints are all fairly easy to make as well. There's a lot of gluing area in here, a lot of gluing area, so they can be quite strong too. And then we've got the bridle joint, okay, found at the corners and at the T junctions as well, where we're removing a third, one third, exactly one third of each um, of each part of the, the joint here. Okay, and we make this really tight kind of sandwich arrangement in here. Loads of gluing area in here. Fairly easy to make, a little bit trickier, but fairly easy to make. But these are decent strong joints as well. And then we get to the mortise and tenon joint. Incredibly strong. Um, among the trickiest that we'll be asked to make. Okay, And we get three different flavours in here depending on what happens to the tenon. Right? Now the tenon is the stick out bit. Okay, The tenon is the bit that uh, sticks out. Okay, I always remember it, you can arrange the tenon parts so that it looks like a capital letter T for tenon. Okay, if you've got imagination to flip it around. So depending on what the tenon's doing, depends what the name of the joint is. So, in this case we've got a tenon 
which goes into a blind hole, a hole which does not poke out the other side. In which case that's called a stub morris and tenon joint. That's pretty good to look at, okay, gives a nice clean finish to things. Here we've got a through mortise and tenon joint where the, where the tenon comes all the way through the hole, okay, and you can see it from the other side. Now sometimes this will run flush with it, or sometimes this will stick right out in a kind of deliberate protrusion. That's a through mortise and tenon. And then we've got the type of mortise and tenon that's used as a corner uh, join in here. It's called a haunched mortise and tenon. And this little cut in here is the haunch, okay, and it gives rise to a slightly more complicated kind of hole drawn in here, Morris in here. So in summary, okay, the butt joint, very weak, okay, but easy to manufacture. The mitre joint, a wee bit better because of that increased gluing area, still weak though. The dowel joint, very strong and easy to make. The halving joint, weak, all right, I'd say it's a little bit better than the mitre, all right. We've got bridles, which are quite strong, bit trickier to make and the mortise and tenon joints which are very strong and they're difficult to make okay they're a true test of your carpentry skills let's go on and talk about carcasses now carcasses are sometimes known as box constructions and it tends to involve corner joints and T joints the basic joints for a carcass again We've got our butt joint here, two pieces of wood squarely cut with glue between them, by any measure a rubbish weak joint, but again very easy to make. An improvement on the butt joint is something called a rebate joint, where we've cut this uh, rebate in here, all right? and that's slightly stronger because it increases the gluing area. We've now got two surfaces to which we can apply to glue, and again just like in the frame joints, we've got the dowel joint up here which can be used in carcass construction. Easy to make, you need to be accurate when you're laying it out and it's very very strong. Let's go and look at some housing joints now. Okay, These are used at the T-junctions uh, of carcass constructions. Two types, the through housing and the stopped housing joint. The through housing is called that because you can see that the trench that the joint runs in goes all the way through the material so that's called a through housing joint but over here we've cut a little notch out and the housing joint stops before breaking through the other side of the material now we would do this just to improve the final look of a part because it's argued that this type of joint this type of arrangement is better to look at it's more aesthetically pleasing than the through housing joint so we've got a better finish with the stopped housing joint. These are all fairly easy to make. okay. And they range from the butt joint, which is very weak, the corner rebate, which is a slight improvement because of that increased gluing area, and the dowel and the housing joints, which are both very strong.